Guys, this is the next masterclass. Unfortunately, I lost all of my footage from the actual lesson, so I'm just re-recording it now as a bit of an ode to the missing footage and so people can actually watch it. Now, what we were up to at the end of the last lesson was we were converting this in, or we are getting this into brush function up and running. Its basic job was to convert an integer into a brush color. So if we sent it the number zero, then it would return us black. If we then were to increase that number by one, and then it would send us white, and then increase it by one, it would send us blue, and so forth. So what we're going to do now is we're going to set up a function which takes, whoop, which accepts clicks on the big pins. Because every time we click a big pin, it's going to move to the next color. So I'm just going to go down underneath end sub and start setting it up there. So I'm going to go sub pin clicked, and this is just going to handle when we actually click on one of the big pins. Sender as an object. E as a mouse button event args, and that's pretty much it. So we're going to handle when the pin is clicked. Now this is going to be for all big pins on our game. So what we need to do now, this has nothing to do with our pins at the moment, and our pins are being generated on the fly. So there's no way that we can go to, let's say, the XAML, and then add it down here. So let me zoom in. There's nothing I can add it to here because there's no big pins. So what I need to do is when we're generating the big pins, is attach this to the object. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll back up to our window loaded until you see these two lines where you set the resource and you set the visibility of the thing. By the way, we're going to change that this lesson. I'll tell you when we do that very soon. What I'm going to do is first of all, we are going to set the pins tag to zero. And we're going to utilize, tag is just like an empty spot of memory and you can put any kind of data in there that you want okay so it's entirely up to you how you use tag so we're going to use it to represent the color that the pin currently is so if it's zero it'll be black if we increase it to one it'll be white two to blue and so forth okay second thing we're going to do is attach that pin clicked event so you simply go add handler okay and it wants the object and it wants the delegate now the event is pin dot mouse down. So for every big pins, mouse down event is going to be attached to this function. So you go address of pin clicked. And it probably looks more complicated than it actually is. We're just saying this event attach this sub. So every time we mouse down on the big pins, this event, or sorry, this sub is going to execute. Okay. So the code for this is pretty simple. We first of all increase the tag value by one. So sender.tag plus equals one. And sender is simply whatever big pin took us to this code. So it, yeah, thank you very much, Windows. All right, next part is we need to check if we go over the amount of colors. There's six colors. So if we go over five, so tag is greater than five, then we need to go back to zero, just like so. And then we need to change or update, I should call this, update the color of the pin. So that sender.fill equals int to brush. This is the first time we're going to bring this guy in, int to brush. And the number is going to be the sender's tag. All right. So pause the video and get this code down if you need, because I'm going to press play. And I'm going to show you how it works with all of my pins available. I can click on any single one of them. And you can see it scrolls through our colors and it goes back to black and so forth when you click too much. All right, so that's that sub over and done with. The next thing we really need to do is get it so we have the colors that the user needs to guess. And so, whoop, let me scroll up. This is going to be the array that stores those four colors they have to guess. And so colors to guess zero will be the one on the left. Colors to guess one will be the next one. Colors to guess two would be the third pin. And colors to guess... Through, or I'll start that up, but colors to guess three or the fourth pin will be the color they have to guess on the right. Okay, so we're going to set up a new sub down here dot, 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 called sub setup game, and this is just going to generate those colors they have to guess. So, first of all, we need to make a random as a new random because it's always hard, and we're going to make up four colors they have to guess. So, four i equals zero, two, three. I might change this to x actually because we're going to use x a lot. Okay. And colors to guess x, remember that's ranging from 0 to 3, so it's going to make our four colors. Equals, and get this, is a bit of inception here, int to brush random, oh, go away, asterisk, random dot next, 0, 6. 
okay? Remember, six is never included in the randomization. So to break this down, this is going to generate a random number between zero and five, okay? It never touches this top number. And then it's going to convert that number into a color and put that inside of our array of colors they have to guess. So now we're going to set up this so the code actually occurs. So I'm going to scroll up to window loaded. Underneath our two nexts, I'm going to set up the game. And it's simply a matter of going set up game, like so. And that'll randomize the colors. Now we're not going to actually see that happen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in some temporary code. So, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go, the bottom row of pins are going to be the colors they have to guess. So the way we do that is you go big pins and zero on the X for the first one on the left and then 10 will give us the last row. It's fill color set to the colors to guess zero. So bottom left, set its color to the first one they have to guess. Next one in the row, set it to the next one they have to guess and so forth. Next one, last color. So now when we play the program, it'll randomize the colors and it will set all those pins to the correct color. And you can see down the bottom, white, blue, white, black, run it again. And it should give us a whole different set of colors every single time we run the game. Okay, so that done, let's close that. We're on our way, we need to set up now what's called the next guess. So when they click on that guess button, it sets up the last row it's going to disable it, and the next row it's going to make them visible and enable them. So what I mean by that, let's start the game. This will be the first row they see. They can click on all these colors. When they press guess, it's going to disable these buttons, so they, all these pins, so they can't click on them anymore. And then it's going to make the next row visible. So the first thing is we need to make all these big pins invisible. Okay? So to do so, scroll up where it's on pin dot visibility make sure it's next to big pin not the small pins we'll worry about them later change that to hidden okay i said that we'd change that and now we have next thing is we need to set up our next guest sub and i'm going to do it right here sub next guess okay and we need to check first of all we're not at the beginning so check we are not at the beginning okay so at the beginning of the game guess is at minus one because I don't want to disable any pins. And that's what we're about to do. So if guess is greater than minus one, then we're gonna disable the pins that you see at the moment. So loop through the row, disable them. So four X equals zero, two, three. You're gonna see that a lot in here. Big pins, X, because that's the X coordinate. And then the row is gonna be the guess number. So if they're on the first guess, it'll be guess zero. So the first row. So is enabled equals false. And that's going to disable the big pin so they can't click on them anymore and can't change their colors. Okay. Next is we move to the next guess, which is simple. We just go next guess plus one. And then make the next row appear. So we're going to do this loop again for x equals zero to three. Big pins, x, guess, visibility equals visible. Okay, so get that down, pause the video if you need to. I want to scroll up a little and I'm going to put next guess under the setup game. Okay, and when I press play now, you'll see that the first row gets enabled and when I click the buttons and I can't click any of the other ones. So the next step, the last thing I'm going to do that we did in the master class was set up the button. So we click on guess, it disables this row and then displays the next one and that's simply just us calling next guess so if we go to our XAML scroll down to where the button is right here and I'm going to add a new click event to it click equals new event handler okay make sure you do that don't type it in scroll to the bottom and there it is so every time we click on the button you just go next guess we're going to do more here later but this is it for the moment so I can click on this row change their colors, click guess. I can't click on the previous row, but I can now click on the next row. And this is getting pretty darn close to finished. We've got a couple more to go, and there's our answers. We've just got to get the actual guessing working, and we've got to get like a win and loss situation going on. So thanks for watching, everybody. I'm sorry about losing the footage, but I hope this was good enough to catch you up to where we were. So I'll catch you in the next one. See you, everybody. No, next Friday. See you, everybody.